His Holiness. Um, I come from a Pentecostal tradition. Uh, my grandfather was Pentecostal. And after hearing that, we would say amen <laughs> several mm -hmm. times <laughs> over and over again. Um, I wanted something that um, you said that almost brought me to tears because I did not know it. But now I know that we were moving in the spirit. I think I heard you say that in 2013, you announced the year of solidarity. I had not met you then, did not know you, did not know about that. Early this morning, um, I was sharing with Jeffrey, we got a deep criticism about something we started in 2013 called Moral Monday. And in Moral Mondays in the state, of, we brought together people from all different races, politics, faith, backgrounds around this concept of, of just basic humanity, basic love. And to hear you say that you called for the year of solidarity, in the same year that I was led to start Moral Monday makes it more meaningful now because I'm clear that it wasn't me, <laughs> that it was in line with the call of the spirit that was happening in the world. And I certainly hope um, that uh, maybe in 2022, we can find a way, as I shared this morning, around the summer solstice, June 18th, 1920, to have a major worldwide, we're gonna do it in the US, but it would be so powerful if it could be in multiple countries, mass, poor peoples, low wealth, poor, poor and low wealth peoples assembly and moral marches or moral gatherings all around the world to amplify the voices and the faces and the imago dei of the people. You said not just for them, but with them. And we lift the moral agency of the religious leaders, people of all faiths, poor and low up people, and our economists, and, 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 and build a stage. What a, what, a, what a day of rejoicing could be if the stones that the builders rejected become chief cornerstones in the building of a new world and that we hopefully save this world from itself or at least announce that the saving is possible if it were here. Thank you so much. Rabbi, Rabbi Shlomo Dov. Uh, Shlomo Dov. Thank you very much for your words. Um, there was something that touched me that you said that uh, as long as there's poverty in the world, that's a sign that the kingdom of heaven hasn't come. Right, and then there's a Hasidic story of a rabbi who they designed for him a synagogue once and they didn't put a window near his place. And he complained, he said, I need a window so that if somebody tells me that Messiah has come, I can always open the window and check. Um, I, need, I need to be connected to the world so I can open the window. And I think that um, perhaps one way of setting ourselves aims was, would be to make ourselves a list of the types of things that we think, if people tell us everything is good, we need to check those on the list, mm. right? And, and because people have all kinds of ideas nowadays about ideals and things are ultimately all right. And you know, maybe what you're basically saying is there's a personal ideology to be able to accept poverty if that's what God gives you, but if, as long as it exists, it's a bad thing. Um, and there are many things like that, that we need to list and we need to, make it clear and something that religions can agree on that as until those things are fixed, mm. we've got work. Please allow me to add something. And this is uh, that uh, with His Holiness, Pope Francis, we have many common things, uh, uh, interests, common ground in our ministry. But what I especially appreciate 
in his high personality and uh, ministry, sacred ministry, is his simplicity and his interest for the poor. Something he repeats always in these eight years of his uh, pontificate. Uh, I admire him for uh, his attitude towards poverty, his sensitivity, uh, his love, his dedication to, 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 to find a solution to the problem of poverty, not only in the Catholic Church, but worldwide, in the whole globe. So may God uh, help him, uh, give him strength to continue to work in favor of uh, poor brothers and sisters of ours in the whole world. Last, last evening, excuse me for interrupting. Last evening, together with my brothers who accompany me, we were, we were invited for dinner in the well-known community of Sant'Egidio. Uh, they offered me a gift, a present, and this was a sculpture made by a Canadian sculptor. Sculptor. Uh, this is Jesus, or a pet is Jesus as a beggar. Jesus as a beggar, mm -hmm. sitting in the street uh, with a glass of water and another glass to receive money. Uh, and when we left uh, the headquarters of Sant'Egidio, they showed me another sculpture, much bigger, of the same artist. Jesus as homeless, mm. sleeping on a ba bank on a bank, his uh, head uh, covered because it was cold, but his feet uh, were shown and with the, the sign of the nine. And uh, I was told that the same statue is uh, in on the square of St. Peter here, mm. uh, uh, ordered by the Pope to have the same sculpture uh, put on the square of St. Peter so that all tourists, all pilgrims can uh, be inspired from that. Mm. Very beautiful. So I will put this uh, small uh, uh, sculpture uh, piece of art, but so rich in symbolism on my uh, desk uh, so that I see it every day working there. And so that all people uh, who visit with me can admire it and be inspired by it. Please, I would just like to add something about this beautiful document that you mentioned for the life of the world because um, you read it. yes I have read it and studied it quite a lot because uh, one of the th reasons why I'd like to mention it and follow up on what you're saying because our meeting is on poverty but we also made a special emphasis on young people and on their development into the future and how poverty at the moment is uh, cutting back and blocking their development. And one of the beautiful things in that document, the thing, one of the things I like the most about it is the way it organizes the whole of the teaching of the church around the life of a human person. 
starting off with the before the conception, the birth, the childhood, adolescence, coming to full maturity, marriage, commitment to life, then, then going into old age. And it's such a beautiful way of organizing, the way to help people understand the church's concern about social life and about human beings. And, and I'd also like to say we'll be using it in a seminar next semester, a ecumenical seminar for students between the two traditions to, to learn more about their, um, their, their own, but also in, in ecumenical dialogue, the traditions of the other Christian communities. Thank you. Human person and the dignity and uniqueness of human person is at the center of our teaching and our action. We, we underline always the importance of respect of human dignity, sacred, sacredness of human person, mm. uniqueness of human person. Everything in our teaching, in our life uh, is ar around the uh, sacredness of human person. That is why we put these things in the uh, booklet. Are you living in the States? Here, here, in Italy. This vice rector of the University of Thomas Aquinas. Do, Dominican Father, Angelico. I have studied here, that is why I know. <laughs> Thank you.